right, good morning, Life Christian Church, giving you your two-minute warning. So uh, if you're taking care of business, hurry it up. Uh, get your toast out of the toaster. Bring it into the living room. Holler up the stairs. Kids, come down here. We're going to watch. We're going to worship this morning. Again, you have two minutes. You can leave your slippers on if you want, though. everybody. We're so glad that you've joined us live. Uh, we hope that you will join us in singing along with just a few songs this morning. Um, we are uh, here together. Um, we're being safe. We're being good and all of those things so that we can bring a little bit of worship to you and a little bit of the word today. So join us uh, like no one's watching because only your family is.
your word will come to my heart will sing your praise Jesus, you're still Keep me within your love. My heart will sing your praise again. Your promise still stands. well with our souls, Lord. We know that you will move the mountain. You haven't ever failed us. We love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, church. I hope you're enjoying your time of worship. I hope you're taking advantage that you're, you're at your home and you can sing as loud as you want and you can dance if you want, and, and you can uh, worship however you please. And uh, hopefully uh, when we are able to get back together, some of that will uh, come with you. But uh, today I want to just uh, take a moment to continue our worship and uh, just talk a little bit about giving. Our lives uh, right now are a little bit disrupted, 
And uh, this whole uh, COVID virus thing has, has uh, left some things up in the air, and uh, some things uh, are just out of our hands. Uh, but there are some things that we know for sure. There's some things that we can still hold on to, and they are certain. For example, God is still God, and he is worthy of our worship. That's why we're making a point to get online and to continue to worship together because our God is still worthy to be worshiped in all of its forms, whether it's singing or serving or praying or giving. And so I want to challenge you today to continue to give to the Lord. We need to do what Paul told the church in Corinthians, uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 58, where he said, Therefore, my dear brothers, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Always give yourselves fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. And we know that's true. And so we need to continue to give of ourselves in all of the ways that uh, we find possible to give unto him. We are still the church, and we still have responsibilities, and we have callings, and we have vision, and we have mission, and we're supposed to continue to do what God has called us to do, whether that's meeting the needs of the people in our uh, church family, or in our city, or the missionaries that we support around the world. And so uh, this morning, don't forget to be faithful to the Lord. Um, our ministry looks a little bit different, but it's going on every day, and we're still touching lives. So right now, <laughs> wherever you are, um, take advantage of being able to do uh, easy and safe giving online. You can go to the website, lifecclv.com, click give at the top of the page, or you can do the text giving, and uh, all you have to do is text uh, LCC Give to 51400. If you're old school, I get it. You can mail a check to the church, or a lot of people have discovered that they can do bill pay on their, uh, through their bank or use Zelle. And so whatever it is, just be faithful to the Lord during this time. Let's, uh, let's just pray real quick. Lord God, we thank you once again for being able to uh, join together, even though we can't do it in person, we can't do it face to face. We can come together and worship together, and that's what we're doing right now. And I just pray as people find uh, the different ways to, to worship with their giving, I just pray, Lord God, that you'll just provide and uh, just bless them for their faithfulness. We love you so much. You're an amazing God. Thank you so much for taking care of us. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, good morning, uh, Life Church. Uh, yeah, even in these times, things keep keeping on. Uh, so we do have some announcements. Um, until all of this is over, Sunday morning worship will be online at 1130. So be sure to join us um, if you just hopped on or the past couple of weeks you've missed it. At 1130 we, is when worship begins. Uh, throughout the rest of the week, Pastor Josh will be jumping online several times to do devotions, answer questions, have prayer, and make announcements. Uh, so be sure to look out for those so that... If you have any questions, they can be answered. Um, uh, and if you have any announcements that we can uh, praise with you. Uh, life, youth, and kids will be meeting online every single week. Uh, I have been doing the youth and running it. It's been awesome. Uh, each week I've had a few kids that always go, so that's been awesome. And uh, Rachel Boyd um, teaches the kids, so be on the lookout for that if you have a young one or know of a young one. Uh, be on the lookout for me and uh, Brent. Uh, we will be going online and doing worship a couple times each week, uh, so that'll be awesome, so be on the lookout for that. Uh, take advantage of all these opportunities uh, to interact, like, comment, message, and share our post. Uh, check on one another and contact life with your prayer needs or anything else, um, because we're still a church family. Um, and yeah, without further ado, Burton. Good morning, life. Welcome to this life. Wow, what a life we've got. It's, a, uh, it's an honor to be here today to share just a few words and a few minutes with you uh, from the Word of God. But, you know, something that I want to just say is all around the world right now, uh, especially today uh, on, on Sunday when this is being telecast uh, live, uh, people are praying everywhere. Uh, we obviously have been united uh, around the world with uh, an unusual uh, once-in-a-lifetime, once-in-two-lifetime situation. And uh, I've got some good news today to share with you to bring some hope 
So let's take a moment and pray. Father, thank you for your time, your time that we need right now in your word. Thank you for sharing words of hope in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's been a few weeks since I uh, was uh, sitting down with my coffee and my, my Bible and I was reading uh, and I, I just got this inspiration. I really believe it was from God. This was before we saw any kind of uh, pandemic uh, hitting our shores here in the U.S. Uh, and it, uh, it was a word that I believe that God gave me, and it was a word of hope. And I got this, I, I just heard this silver linings. And, and you know, I, I, I started jotting things down that was coming to my mind and, and to my heart. And I want to share those words with you today. But I want to start with... Uh, with one of our past presidents. President Ronald Reagan uh, was known as the great communicator. And he's told a lot of stories, uh, and uh, one of the stories he told that he's famous for, I wanna share with you today, I hope I don't butcher it too much, but he told a story about twin boys, they were about five or six years old, and they had completely opposite personalities. One was a pessimist, and the other was an optimist. Now. The parents were a little concerned that they were a little overboard with their pessimism and their optimism. So they went and sought the help of a psychiatrist. The boys went to the psychiatrist and uh, the psychiatrist uh, took one of the boys, the pessimist, and took him down the hallway and they entered a room, opened the door, walked into the room. And in the middle of the room was a mountain of toys. And the little pessimist boy looks at the toys and immediately begins to cry. And the psychiatrist says, what are you crying for? Look at all these toys. And the little boy says, I know I see all the toys, but I'm afraid if I play with them, I'm going to break them. Then the psychiatrist goes and he grabs the optimist kid, takes him down the hallway to a different room. They open the door. They walk into the room. In the middle of the room is a mountain of horse manure. And the little kid, the optimist, shouts with joy and glee and runs and climbs up on top of the mountain of manure and he starts to dig down into the poop. And the psychiatrist says, what are you doing? And the boy says, with all this poop in here, there's got to be a pony in here somewhere. You know, that is hope. That is what optimism is all about. And, and you know what? The first thing, and this might be the most profound thing you're going to hear today, poop happens. We got to make a bumper sticker like that. I think somebody did. Poop happens. It's a fact of life. And here's the question. Which twin do you want to be? Because we have a choice. Interestingly enough, President Reagan served two terms in the White House, and he had a very loyal staff. And you know, as you can imagine, the White House has a lot of activity. They get a lot of bad news on a daily basis. And whenever they had a situation that really looked dire and hopeless, one of the staff members would say, there must be a pony in here somewhere. And that's what we need to say to each other today. That's what we need to remember. There is a silver lining around the dark cloud that is hanging over the earth right now and over all nations. And we need to focus on that silver lining because hope is an amazing thing. It's the expectation and a desire for a certain outcome and what better time for hope than now. We need it. We need to be able to share hope. Some of us have to stir it up. Say, what is there to hope for? Well, I'll tell you, there's going to be a few things you're going to hear this morning that just might stir up that hope in you. You see... Silver linings are the unexpected, unexpected positive aspects of every negative situation. I remember back about five years ago, I, uh, I was being wheeled on a gurney down the hallways of St. Rose Dominican Hospital, and I was heading to the operating room to receive open heart surgery. I was born with a heart defect that the medical professionals had been addressing with medication and exercise and all that, but they finally had reached a point where there was, there was no more medicating, there was no more uh, you know, things that they could do for me, 
uh, without opening up my chest and working on my heart and correcting what was wrong. And as they wheeled me into the operating room, I think that the doctors and the nurses were a little bit surprised because I had this smile on my face and I just love to make people laugh. And I was sharing some things with them and making them laugh. And I was saying, man, when you get inside my heart, say hi to Jesus for me. And, uh, you know, and, and, and I, really, I really had this amazing peace. And, uh, and I have had people ask me, were you scared? What were you thinking? And I, I said, you know, as I was being wheeled in there, because I have this hope in my heart, this faith in, in God in my heart, I could honestly say I was at peace, I was thankful, I was grateful for the family God had given me, for the life I had lived, and I thought, I win either way. Either way, I'm going to wake up in recovery, or I'm going to wake up in heaven. Either way, I win. That is looking at the silver linings. And you know, yesterday my, my wife and I and our little dachshund, Belle, we were taking a walk around Silverado Ranch Park and uh, keeping a safe distance, of course. And, uh, but we were noticing all of the people, singles, couples, families, walking their dogs, riding their bicycles, enjoying the great outdoors. I've seen our neighborhood more alive than it's been in years. People outside, people working on their house, people are rediscovering what garden tools look like and what they're used for. Um, it's amazing what people are rediscovering, how people are responding to the situation that we have. And you know, I have to say, I see so much positive uh, of course, we don't ever want to see something like this happen in order to get to this place where we have to turn uh, and our attention and re reset, press the reset button on life. But, you know, that's what hope is all about. Hope isn't just wishful thinking. Hope is cultivated in the heart of those who choose to see potential and possibility in the darkest of clouds. You see, it's a choice. We can make the decision to have hope or be hopeless. It's a decision. You make it for yourself, I make it for me. Hopefully, we can share hope with one another. Now, I am a sailor. I love to sail. I've done some sailing. I have a sailboat right now that's waiting for me to come and, and get on board and go sailing. But I'm afraid if I go to Southern California where my boat is, they might not let me come home. So I, uh, I've chosen to stay here in Las Vegas and wait this out. But uh, one of the scriptures that means a lot to me as a sailor is from Hebrews chapter 6 and verse number 19. It says, this hope is a strong and trustworthy anchor for our souls. Have you ever set an anchor? The last time I set an anchor, we were, we were in a little cove off the coast of Southern California on the island of Santa Cruz, and we had nosed into this cove, it's called Ladies Cove, and it was a pretty tight little fit. And as we moved in close to shore, but not too close, we went ahead and we dropped the anchor. And we waited for that anchor off the bow, we waited for that anchor to hit the seafloor. And when that anchor hit the seafloor, that's when we put the engine in reverse, and we started to reverse just a little at a time until that anchor bit into the soil. And once it bit in like it's supposed to, the boat came to a stop. That's when we knew we were grounded, that we were established, that we were on that place, that solid ground place where we knew the boat wasn't going to, to move. Now, during that course of that night, that, that night, we actually did have some wind and some waves, and, and it was... Uh, it was a little harrowing, so we did some watches. We took turns out in the cockpit at night while some slept. One of us was in the cockpit, and we watched to make sure that the anchor would hold. And, and that's what we kind of have to do with, with our life nowadays. And, you know, it's interesting how different personalities approach life differently. We already talked about the pessimist. Well, let me say in this situation, this is what the pessimist would say. When the wind and the waves come, he would go, I'm going down with the ship. 
A pessimist sees the negative in every situation and automatically defaults to that. Well, maybe you say, well, I'm not the pessimist, but I'm not the optimist either. I'm just a realist. I call things as they are. So if that's you, this is what you say. There is wind and there are waves. And I may end up on the rocks. Oh, well. And you just take life as it comes. But I love what the optimist says because I've been here before. I've, I've taken my boat out when there was wind and there was waves and it got a little harrowing and this was my attitude. Call me crazy if you want, but I was like, ride them, cowboy. I was just like so excited, you know, and, and I've had that boat heeled over where the water's coming in the side. And, and, and you know, of course, my wife, Tony, does not like that at all. So uh, I, I try to limit those times to when it's just me and my twin sister who's equally crazy like I am. And uh, so it's, it's, it's just an attitude, I guess, you know, enjoying life. And when the dark clouds come, when the storm rages, when the waves grow, we look at the opportunity that's there and we take advantage of it. It's a choice. Let me share with you one last scripture from Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 8. It says, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. I have to say that gratefulness, having an attitude and a heart of gratefulness, of thankfulness, illuminates the good that's all around us. To be thankful for our families when we are thinking about what's going on right now, of the people that are sick, of the people that are experiencing the pain of this pandemic, to, to think of your family, to pray for your family, like maybe you haven't prayed for them in a long, long time. That is how we reach down and we take hope and let it become the anchor of our souls. And then in verse 7, it says, Then, after being grateful and thankful, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. What does it mean to live in Christ? I remember several years ago when I was pastoring in Hawaii, I was preaching a message where I was talking about putting on the armor of God and living in Christ and letting him cover me and I found this Superman suit and it had all the muscles and all the bulges and it was it was a Superman suit and I put that Superman suit on and I wore that as I preached this message and you know it was like I know that on the outside I looked all buff and beautiful and strong and all that on the inside it was just me that's what it's like at least to me, that's what it's like to put on Christ. And if there ever were a time that we need to be hidden with Christ in God, to be one with our Heavenly Father, that time is now. To know our relationship with God is secure, it's steadfast, it'll stand the test of time. That is the hope, that is the anchor of our soul. And verse number eight, it says, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right and pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. You know, sometimes we just need to turn off the noise in our heads and turn off the noise from the TV. And we need to turn on the eyes of our heart and see things that are not readily apparent, to see the silver lining in the clouds above and to know God will never leave us and he will never forsake us. You see, hope 
is the fuel for faith. And faith and hope always sees ponies in a pile of poop. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, for your word today. Thank you for giving us a new sense of hope and peace in you to know, Father, that you hear us when we pray, that you see us, Father God, in our time of need. Father, we pray for our neighbors and our family members. We pray for all those around this planet that are being affected today by this pandemic. And we ask you for mercy and grace and help us to share your love, your peace, and your hope with everyone we meet. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.